Now, young drivers could be banned from carrying passengers unless they're members of their own family in a bid to cut crashes. The plan has been put to ministers by the Association of British Insurers who say that road accidents are the main killer of 16 to 24 year olds. Porrick O'Brien reports. Three teenage employees at a go-karting centre today serve as our focus group for new proposals the government is considering. According to insurers, people like this are three times more likely to be involved in a car crash than a middle-aged motorist. The upshot for one teenager living in central London... For me to insure like a 1.1 litre car would be around about £6,000 per year. Really? Yeah. That is a lot of money. Mm. These three young men are completely priced out of the market. Here's part of the reason why. Last year, nearly 2,000 people were killed on Britain's roads, the first rise since 2003. One in eight drivers is under 25, but they account for a third of those who die. In 2011, drivers between 17 and 19 were involved in 12,000 crashes. So, how do you start bringing premiums down? In an interview with The Telegraph today, the Transport Minister was sounding receptive to proposals first mooted by the insurance industry back in September. Proposals that go something like this. We would like to see a one-year minimum learning period and also restriction on the number of passengers a young person can carry and what time of day they can drive as well. The Transport Minister also nodded to the possibility of new young drivers only being allowed to take family members as passengers initially. A similar system is being seriously considered in Northern Ireland. Our focus group, and for that matter the Automobile Association, think the proposals are draconian and unpoliceable. For them, the solution is technology. Friends of theirs are opting for a tailored insurance package. It incorporates a GPS-based black box system which records speed. So if you don't speed, your premium comes down. You buy certain miles per year and if you do good per month you get extra miles for free. And if you speed, you get penalised for it. If you don't speed, you get rewarded. So you're fully monitored wherever you go and you can't hide. Although the cooperative offers this, the insurance industry as a whole is lukewarm. In the meantime, this is as close as many young people will get to behind the wheel of a car. Well, I'm joined now by Sophie Morning, Morgan, who you'll remember is one of the Channel 4 Paralympics presenters, who lost the use of her legs following a car accident nine years ago. What happened to you? I mean, what was, were you a young person trying to impress your friends? I was exactly, exactly that. I was your stereotypical textbook teenager. I just learnt to drive and I was driving home from a party and I had a car full of friends and I was driving too fast, completely inexperienced, very naive and lost control and as a result broke my back. Thankfully, no one in the car was hurt, but yeah, definitely influenced by the, the culture that was going the on The peer in my pressure? Car. I'd say, yeah, the peer pressure. So this sounds like a good idea. I don't know. I think there are elements of it that, is a, there are, that are good, but I think these post-test restrictions maybe should be a last resort. There are things in place now, like Drive IQ, for example, which I'm a, an ambassador for, which would enable better education for young people. Now, now, now this is a bit of software that we can, we can have a look at roughly what it does. This is yes. to get people practicing road sense Absolutely. as what teenagers. It, that's right. And what it does is it's bringing something new into the driving like process that we don't really have at the moment. It's saying, come on, you can be influenced by the passengers in your car. Why aren't we thinking about that? You know, we're not taught that when we're learning. We're learnt, we're taught, sorry, to drive the car, you know, the technicalities of driving, steer, signal, manoeuvre. Those are the things we're taught. But we know now that's not working. The statistics are showing we need to change the way that young people learn to drive. But ultimately, even things like that are really just teaching you what to do they're not teaching you how to deal with the pressure of being excited at 11 30 at night and you're driving home from the pub or from a night out or whatever it is and you're trying to impress the girl or the boy you're with and you're not equipped to do it well in a way i know what you're saying those things you learn through experience but actually drive iq is doing that it's simulating certain situations that we're not actually being given a lot of insight to when we're learning currently and this sort of software is absolutely just changing that right but i mean if, if ministers decide to to go ahead yeah. and, and and try and do something i mean at least they will be really trying to tackle this i mean you know despite making the driving test harder despite theory tests and all, all those sorts of things considering 
you know, ma making people be probationers for, for, for longer. This is still a terrible killer oh, it is. for young people. So, I mean, it's at what point, thing. you know, you say it's a last resort. At what point do you say, OK, time right. to deploy the last resort? There is absolutely... We need to do something now. I mean, I'm saying that education needs to be improved, and that's why I'm advocating the use of Drive IQ. But there are lots of things that need to be done. We do need to tackle this issue, and it's right that we're having this conversation right now. It is the biggest killer of young people. One in five young people are going to crash, just like me. And everyone out there thinks, oh, it won't be me. You know, it's going to be my friend. It will, well, that, it's just not going to happen, but it does happen. OK, Sophie Morgan, thank you very much. Thank you.